Hey, what's up, fiber folks? Welcome back or welcome to High Fiber Knits. My name is Emily, and today we're picking up where we left off with a spring knitting podcast episode. So even though I only skipped, I think, a week of uploading, it feels like it's been a lot longer since I filmed because I do tend to film maybe a week or a handful of days in advance. So I'm excited to just bring you back up to speed with where I am at with my knitting. I have some yarn pantry updates to share with you, as well as this little bit of a giveaway just to celebrate hitting 10k here on YouTube. So let's just jump straight into it. My finished object, which is done at long last, is my pair of vanilla socks in gifted yarns. This is Green of Wheat from Arcane Fiber Works. It is just, as I said, fingering weight vanilla sock knit up on two millimeter needles with I think a 59 round leg and a 59 round foot and a simple wedge toe. Very straightforward, but such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful colorway. So I'm really excited to start getting some wear out of these. They are indeed the best fitting socks I've been able to make for myself so far. So I am, yeah, just happy to have these. They're the first pair of fingering weight socks that I've knit myself since maybe around this time last year. And those ones were absolutely gorgeous. I used Songbird yarn and fibers at Nico Bar Pigeon, which is like a purple variegated colorway. Love those socks, but they did come out a little bit big. Um, so these were a home run. Super happy about them. I don't have plans to cast on any more socks super, super soon for myself, at least. I think I might start working on a pair for Adam, but so far this year, at the end of May, I've knit more pairs of socks than I knit all of 2022. So I'm a bit ready for, for a bit of a sock hiatus, if you will. And really, those socks were my only finished object because the next thing that I want to share with you is sadly still a work in progress. It is my Nonna's summer top. So when last I showed this to you, I think I was just around the end of the body. I hadn't yet bound off for the body. And my question unto everyone was how I should do all of the finishings. And I did end up deciding to do the folded stockinette. I just thought it was going to give me the cleanest look out of all of the possible finishes. So I've got the folded hem stockinette here at the bottom. And then for the collar, I just picked up um, almost every stitch, and then I wrote. I knit four, seven rows. I did a purl bump row, and then I duplicated that. I cast off, and then I just did a whip stitch to hold everything down. I'm really not a fan of that knitting two together to do a folded hem. I find it unnecessarily frustrating and fiddly. So I just thought it would be easiest and also possibly more structurally stable to do it sewn down. Now that being said, I do have a little bit of concern that it won't like sit around the neck very nicely, but I'm just gonna have my Nona try it on and if it needs changes, it's gonna get changes, but the reason why this is taking me so long, you'll notice I have the armhole, which I'm also just doing folded stockinette. Um, I have the armhole on a long pair of Chowgu red lace fixed circular needles. And the reason is that when I went to pick up the stitches for the armhole and I started knitting around the armhole, I snapped 
one of the tips of my Lika interchangeable needle set. I am working this top on 3.25 millimeter needles um, and the yarn is Barocco Modern Cotton in this gorgeous like Mediterranean blue kind of colorway. This I think is the worsted weight version of the yarn. It does come in both DK and worsted weight. It's one of my favorite summer yarns. Um, it's a mix of cotton and viscose and modal. It feels very nice to knit with. Um, but as you can imagine, it being mostly a cotton fiber, it's pretty heavy. So I think that because I was knitting the top on 3.25 millimeter needles and my Lika interchangeable needle set are short tips, I think they're the three and a half inch length. I think just the weight of the garment and I've used those needles so much um, they're what I use for my DK weight socks. I just, the 3.25 millimeter is a very common size for me to be using. Um, the needle ended up snapping, uh, right at the base where the wood sort of fastens into the metal part that then screws onto the cables. Um, so that was really disappointing because you know it was part of a set that broke if it was just like any random needle it might not have been as um disappointing but those things happen it's not the first time that i've snapped a needle um but it was the first time that i started to reconsider if i have a preference for wooden needles or metal needles as I said, my one and only interchangeable needle set is the Lika Grove, the 3.5 inch length tips. Um, and it's a set that goes from 3.25 millimeter needles up to 6.5 millimeter needles. And I've had those since March of 2021. So I've had them for over two years now. And they're what I've used almost exclusively except for um, three millimeter needles because I purchased a pair of these in three millimeter and I use those very often um, if I'm working three millimeter because well the Lika set doesn't go down that far um, but I started to wonder if structurally and in terms of durability if anybody notices a difference between fixed circular needles and interchangeable needles. In my mind, there's more opportunities for an interchangeable needle to break because you have the needle itself that can break where the needle inserts or joins with like the fastening and then where the cable joins the actual needle tip itself. So it seems to me that there's more opportunities or like weak points where an interchangeable needle could potentially break compared to a fixed circular needle. Um, but I've also broken fixed circular needles before as well. Also wooden ones, also pretty small. I think it was a two millimeter needle, which I had previously snapped, which like makes perfect sense because I was knitting really tight lace. But when, but when this snapped, I was really surprised because I didn't feel like I was gripping the yarn too tight. The needle and the yarn combination was very pleasant to knit with. I didn't feel like I had to exert any extra amount of force to really make it work, but, but it happened. And so um, just this past weekend, Adam and I had some business to take care of with our condo. We do close on it on May 24th. So by the time you see this, um, I'll probably officially be a homeowner, which is beyond exciting. Um, but we, we had some condo business to do. So I we ended up being able to stop in at a yarn store nearby and I was able to, to replace my 3.25s. I picked a 47 inch cable because as you can see, it's a good length for being able to do magic loop 
and if I ever decide that I want to knit a sweater on this needle size then this circumference should be comfortable for knitting a body as well. But that whole saga is essentially to say that I am still working on this top for my nunna but I actually should be able to finish it today if I really want to because I'm on the second half of knitting for this armhole and then I have the one armhole to do left over so it'll just need to block some weaving in the ends after that and we're good to go. I should say in case you haven't seen the previous episode or just as a reminder I did not use a pattern to knit this top for my nonna. Um, she really wanted something plain. I wanted to knit the Rosenland top by Sari Nordland for her, but she was like, I know, I just want something simple, something really, really plain that I can wear underneath a blazer with pants, sort of like a top to go with a suit. So I figured after looking at several different patterns, um, I didn't want to compromise and knit one that wasn't size inclusive. I also didn't want to compromise on any of the aesthetic design pieces that she wanted. So I figured the easiest thing would be to knit a swatch with the yarn that she'd already picked out and go forward with not necessarily freestyling, but doing essentially a custom top for her. Um, I feel like I know enough now about garment construction that I can manage something simple like this, but I don't feel like I have a desire to like design or write a pattern right now. Um, I don't feel like I have a specific enough design point of view that really compels me to like need to share any sort of brainchild design of mine. But anyway, it's basically I just cast on and knit a rectangle at the back and then I knit two shoulder pieces at the front, joined in the round, coasted down, and we have a sleeveless top. <laughs> um, I'm pretty pleased with how it's turning out so far. I've tried it on myself because my measurements are close enough to my nunnas that I can get a sense of if there's any serious proportion issues or fit issues um, or length issues like I really needed to make sure this was long enough for my nonna. Um, she's gonna be 81 this year. She doesn't want to wear cutesy cropped things as much as I might be interested in doing so. So I need to remember to knit long enough for her, not long enough for me. So that's been that's been the journey we've been on for this top. And I've had this yarn since spring of 2022, so I'm gonna be really pleased to have this done and have my nonna have enough time to wear it while the weather still works. Moving on to the next work in progress, which is kind of all up in tangles at the moment. Um, I am working on another little mug rug. I did end up adding the fringe to the last one I shared with you and pretty much immediately cast on a new one. So these mug rugs are essentially just little coasters that I like to knit with special leftover yarns because I do get a lot of use out of these. And so I've cast on 30 stitches just on a pair of three millimeter needles. And for this particular one, I am using some leftover knitting for Olive. This is Merino in the colorway Marzipan and my Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles in the colorway Leftover. Uh, leftover. <laughs> this is the colorway artifact of the Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles. This is leftover from... Um, a weekend hat by Petite Knit that I made and this is left over from my hour pullover by Sari Nordland which I cast off in January so not too much super exciting but I do like how you get some of the speckles in this fabric but it is otherwise very neutral these are just fun quick easy little knits I think they'd be great to sort of work on periodically, not so much 
do half a dozen in a week, uh, but sort of collect them over time and just have them accumulate either for your own use or for a gift. I think they're just great little scrap busters. So that's another work in progress that I've had going on. And my last work in progress I'm excited to share with you because it is a, another test knit for Sari Nordland. I think this is my fifth time test knitting for her. I test knit two, three, maybe the fourth time I'm test knitting. No, this is the fifth time I'm test knitting for Sari Nordland. Um, and this is the Salutoriette Market Bag. I don't think I'm pronouncing that perfectly. It's spelt kind of like salute or get, salute or get, but the way she pronounced it in her recent video was more like salutoriet, which I think she was saying translates to marketplace um, or is the name of a marketplace in Finland around where she lives. So I have been imagining knitting something like one of these tote bags for quite some time. They're all over my summer vision board, which I'm excited to share with you soon. Um, but I was just very keen to get in on this test knit. She wrote the pattern for some sport weight linen yarn. It's actually written for Dororum Natura's Antigone, which is 100% linen. I've worked with that yarn before and it creates a beautiful product, but I'm not a fan of working with it because I find the 100% linen to be very tough on the hands. Um, but it's written for that yarn. It's written for three millimeter needles. And I'm not using that yarn or working on three millimeter needles. So I will show you what I am working with. Got a lot of stuff on my bed right now. Um, I am knitting this up in a cone of thrifted cotton yarn. So this is actually my entry in the special skeins cal that's being hosted by Carson from Carsley Handmade and Amanda from Birch and Lily Fibers. You would remember um, Amanda gifted me some gorgeous skeins of yarn that I shared in the last episode. Um, and they're co-hosting this special skeins cal, which is essentially to knit with a skein that's special to you. And I think a lot of knitters might default to like a very expensive skein of yarn or a skein of yarn with very unique fibers, maybe something with camel or something with silk or something with cashmere, or might even think of hand dyed yarns. And all of those are very special. But to me, this is special because one, just thrifted yarn can be such a gem and it can be so exciting to find really nice, good quality yarn in the thrift store or yarn that speaks to you in the thrift store. Um, I do see a good amount of yarn at my local thrift store from time to time, but of all of the yarn that I've thrifted, and I've now thrifted yarn a good handful of times, um, this is the first time I am actually committed to using my thrifted yarn. So to me, this is special because it's thrifted and because it's the first time I am actually using my thrifted yarn. So this qualifies in the special skeins for me. And you'll notice that this is a pretty thick cotton yarn. This is, in my opinion, a worsted weight. And so I did go up to a 3.5 millimeter needle for the bag. I probably could have and should have gone up even to a four millimeter needle because you'll notice this gorgeous repeating netted lace pattern could be you know, a little more open. And you know, that might change with, with blocking, but for this type of bag, I do think having something with a more dense fabric will not be to the detriment of the final product. I also got to learn some new techniques with this bag. It does get worked from the bottom of the bag up. And so the pattern calls for 
Judy's Magic Cast On, which is a common technique that's used in things like toe up socks. Um, and essentially what it allows you to do is one cast on that you can work from both sides using Magic Loop for a while um, and then just work simply in the round. So that should give you a, a seamless look very similar to how the Kitchener stitch might appear. So as you can see, I actually did mine backwards or I did it correctly, but then just started knitting from it in the wrong direction, which is okay because as you can see, I have this sort of pearl bump seam and that's gonna coordinate really well with the pearl bump row that goes at the top of the bag um, because this will be doubly folded before I knit and add on the handles. So I really liked doing the Judy's Magic Cast On. I found it a lot easier than I was expecting it to be. Um, I really struggle with tubular cast on and generally avoid it. Um, I will use like a German twisted cast on more often instead of the tubular cast on. And so I thought it was going to be a little more like that. Um, but I, I found Judy's Magic Cast On to be a piece of cake, save for the fact that I did it the wrong way when I started actually knitting. <laughs> the lace pattern itself is really nice to work. I didn't start working the lace pattern until I had had enough stockinette that I could work comfortably in the round and no longer be working in magic loop. So this stockinette portion of the bottom of my bag is longer than what the pattern calls for. But again, I think having this dense stockinette base of the bag will just be good for its structure when I actually want to put things into it. But I really love this lace repeat. It is one of those stitches that kind of makes your needles feel like they're dancing. And if you've ever done the Norwegian Pearl, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. It just is sort of like a very satisfying motion of the wrists and of the needles. I really, really like the stitch pattern. It's a four row repeat, but two of the rows are knitting. So without giving away much more than that, it's a very repeatable, memorizable repeat that I really appreciate in lace knitting. The last thing I'll comment on about this bag before moving on is that when you are working a lace pattern like this and you're using a yarn that might be difficult on the hands, especially as the project gets heavier, I would suggest going up in yarn thickness when you can so that you can go up in needle size as well. That is just going to put more of like the weight of the project into the needles as opposed to into your hands and wrists. And it'll also allow you to use a larger needle on the right hand and a smaller needle on the left hand. One of my favorite tips for lace knitting is to use a smaller needle on the left side so that your stitches are left with a little more room for manipulation. A lot of lace knitting stitches require you to knit into multiple stitches at the same time, a lot of the times more than two stitches, um, or you have to do funky things through the back loop where you need to pass stitches back and forth over the needles. And I find that when you use a left needle that is smaller than the needle size called for in the pattern, and your right needle is that regular needle size that the pattern calls for, then you have just a little bit more space to maneuver within those stitches. It just makes the overall experience a little more pleasant, especially when you're working with a yarn that's not going to stretch at all, like a cotton or like a linen. That was something that I learned when I was test knitting the Luminen pullover 
also for Sari Nordland because that was a super, super chunky sweater where you had to do like several stitches knit together at the same time. And so I think I worked that with an eight millimeter or even like a six millimeter needle in my left hand and a 10 millimeter needle in my right hand. And it just made the experience so much better. I can't, I can't even tell you. So that would be my tip for, for lace knitting. I know a lot of spring and summer patterns have beautiful lace motifs in them. And there seems to be a lot more uh, support for summery fibers like cottons and linens over merino and wools this year. So if you're planning on doing any intense lace knitting, I would definitely, definitely recommend giving that tip a try. Um, I think it speaks to the philosophy that Andrea Mowry talks a lot about, where she says that, you know, you shouldn't be trying to knit looser, you should change your tools rather than change the way that you knit in the long run, it's going to be a more pleasant experience for you and it's going to be a lot better on your body because ultimately the most valuable tool you have as a knitter is your faculty, right? Like your ability to knit. So don't undervalue that and deprioritize it in favor of a project that you really want to knit. Make sure you take care of you first. So now I'm going to tell you about some new additions to my yarn pantry. I have been waxing poetic. I have been waxing loquacious about green this spring. I am like big time obsessing over these like really warm, juicy apple greens, lime greens, golden lime. If it's like a warm, bright, fun, poppy kind of green tone, I've been here for it this spring. So Zoe from Woolerton Estate Yarns reached out to me and they said that they had just done a collection of all new spring colors and that they would love for me to try out some of their green colorways and I was beyond excited for that so they said you know let me know what kinds of projects you have in mind I'll send over a few things your way and these greens do not disappoint let me tell you so we'll start with the minis because they're so darn cute I also okay I'll show them all to you and then I'll tell you all the other things that I am absolutely obsessed with about these yarns. So first of all, here are the green minis. They are gorgeous, they are delicious, they are bright. They are everything I want in a spring green colorway. I can't even say enough good things about these colors. So. This is a mini skein of their base called The Manager, and all of the Woolerton Estate yarns have their Woolerton Estate tag, and then these gorgeous, like, super funky antique portraits for all of the different yarn qualities that they have. And then it's attached to the skein with a light bulb stitch marker, which is just kind of brilliant IMO rather than using more yarn that you need to like worry about cutting. Every time I need to cut like the yarn that ties a skein together, I'm like holding my breath because I'm like, if I actually cut the real yarn, I'm going to be so irritated with myself. So I thought that just attaching the tag with a light bulb stitch marker was absolutely brilliant. This base, the manager, is the 80% merino, 20% nylon sock yarn. So this one is 100 grams, you'll get 400 yards, but this is clearly a mini skein. So this super, super bright green is the colorway Burt, and this is the one that I'm like, this is the color that I've been vibing with big time this spring. Then this is probably the most delicate of all of the colors. It is also the manager. And this colorway is called Sophia. Very beautiful, very delicate, 
for comparison to gorgeous greens. Then the more highlighter yellow of the bunch. Again, this is the manager and this one is called Joe. So there it is. And the apple green colorway, this one is called Ginny. Really, really beautiful. These are all two ply sock yarns. Very soft, very squishy. I love the feeling of all of these. I am undecided as of right now. I think these would make a fun little stripey hat, maybe for a baby, like a little cap. Um, but I could also have these featured as like their own little section of my excavation blanket, just to sort of commemorate this stint of green obsession that I have been having lately. And then they also sent me a couple other full-sized skeins of yarn. So this one I saw and I was not expecting it. I thought that Zoe was just going to be sending some like solids and some tonals. But if you know me, you know that one of my favorite ways to experience hand-dyed yarn is like a neutral vase with some multicolored speckles love me a multicolored speckle moment and so i saw this skein and i basically gasped audibly and adam was like are you okay and i said i am more than okay i am beyond okay i'm like i'm just gonna show you the yarn here it is boom gorgeous i mean i mean amazing so this one here we have the portrait. This base is called the Vacationer and it is a fingering weight yarn, 439 yards per 100 grams. And it's 80% superwash merino and 20% bamboo, which is a very new base to me. If I'm not mistaken, this kind of base can also be used for socks. It does look like a four ply, so it probably has a good amount of twist. And I would also imagine that the bamboo would function very similarly to nylon in terms of increasing the durability of the yarn itself. But to me, this is asking to become a tank. And I know I've been going on and on and on about wool tanks and how I don't believe they are the be all end all of spring summer knitting but I'm curious to see what the bamboo makes of the fabric that knits up. Um, I would be very curious to to experience this as a negative ease ribbed bralette probably the ripple bralette by Jesse made designs um, especially because this does have pretty good meterage. It's not just 400 yards, it's 440-ish yards. So yeah, I'm, I'm just, this is, this is everything I want in a speckled yarn. I also love, one thing about me is I really love purple and green together. It makes me think of like fields of lavender. It's very, very much like a pretty and a delicate sort of pairing of colors that I just so appreciate. But then you also have these like super punchy spackles of, of neon. So for me, like a colorway like this just has to be, has to be a garment. And if the most garment I can get out of this is a ripple bralette, then so be it, I will wear it, I will layer with it when it is cool enough to do so. And the final skein of yarn that Woolerton Estate sent to me is a base called the Exotic. And this is also the colorway Sophia. So this is the same colorway as this mini skein, but this is dyed on a base of 50% alpaca, 25% silk, and 25% linen. So this is definitely more of a drapey, you can see if I hold the skein like this, 
This is definitely more of a drapey fiber compared to, I mean, I guess the merino will do that too, but there we go. If I'm holding them around the same position, um, very, very drapey fiber. This is also a fingering weight yarn. This is 438 yards per 100 grams. And this is just a, such a beautiful, light, grassy green colorway. It's beautiful, so beautiful. And so those are the yarns that were so generously gifted to me by Woolerton Estate. And that brings me to the little giveaway that I wanted to put together for reaching 10K here on YouTube. It's not lost on me that there is a lot of privilege that comes with the influence that I have as a content creator here on YouTube and on Instagram. And one of the major perks of doing this thing here on the internet is that there are folks who are so generous to send me yarn oftentimes without any expectation. Um, and so for me, it's just an honor to be considered, especially when I get to try out yarns by Canadian dyers. Wollerton Estate is based in Quebec, which is super, super cool. Um, it's just, it's such an honor for, for me and it's such a privilege and I just want to extend the generosity that's been shown to me to you folks as well. So I thought that I would pick at least one skein from each of the three dyers who has sent yarn to me so far this year as a little bit of a giveaway. So these are the yarns that are going to be included in the giveaway. The first skein is going to be the exotic in the colorway Sophia from Woolerton Estate Yarns. The next two skeins are both from Birch and Lily. These are dyed by Amanda. And so this one here is the Birch DK four ply in the colorway Wanderlust. This beautiful, soft, icy blue with a lot of speckles. And then the Birch Sock two ply in the colorway Jillian, which is this really delicate, gorgeous, soft pink. I thought that these two colors paired really, really beautifully together for something very fresh and springy, but I also thought that the speckles and the pink looked really nice together as well. So you can sort of play around with what's happening here. And then you may also recall that Tyler from Arcane Fiberworks sent me some yarn earlier this year as well. So I am giving away this skein from Arcane Fiberworks, which is a bit more of a, um, a colorway that'll turn out probably really stripy once it's knit up. And this is their DK weight sock yarn, also an 80-20 merino nylon in the colorway Home on the Range. So these are the skeins that will be received by somebody. I also think that Jillian and Home on the Range could look really nice together as well because the sort of peachy tones sort of pull on those light oranges that come through in the Home on the Range. So, so there's some mix and match potential in this collection of skeins here. So if you're interested in being considered for this giveaway, it's going to be run here on YouTube exclusively just for ease of facilitating. It is going to be done by commenting. So before I ask you how I would like you to comment, I will say that I will only be announcing the giveaway winner with a comment picker in another YouTube video if you have somebody reach out to you that is asking for any personal information, please know that it is not me unless it is 
you know, you've reached out to me because I've said that you're the winner. I know there's been a lot of iffiness about giveaways and bots and people falsely claiming to be people that they are not or bots falsely claiming to be people that they are not. So please know that very officially the giveaway winner will be announced here and I will be asking the winner to reach out to me via email to facilitate any of the further action that's required for the giveaway. So to participate in the giveaway, I'd love for you to comment down below who your favorite yarn dyer or yarn dyeing company is or where your favorite local yarn shop is, provided that you're comfortable sharing, you know, that regional information or you can just simply share what your favorite yarn is that you're looking forward to using this spring or summer. And I will be picking in my next podcast episode, more specifically, um, who the winner is going to be. And the reason I say my next podcast episode more specifically is that I, I'll be batch filming other videos today. So I will clearly not be able to pick a winner in those videos if they're filmed 10 minutes from now. So good luck to everybody who is participating. I am very, very excited to spread the joy, spread the love. So thank you all so much for supporting me, supporting High Fiber Knits, for spending this 30 minutes, 45 minutes, hour of your time just indulging in and sharing excitement for a really cool craft, a really cool crafting community. So yeah, that's all for today. And until I get to see you all again, I am wishing you health and happy knitting. Bye everyone.